course, did lots of things in my life where I had people who were basically like, oh, well, Michelle, you did pageants, you went to college, you did, which I did horrible at college socially. I had very bad things happen to me because I had no kind of gauge or filter for when people were doing mean things or using me or... I one time emptied my entire bank account because my roommate told me to. Like, we have things like that happen because we literally just have a different set of tools to observe. Now, I love myself. I don't want to be any different. I feel like some of the things with artistic people that uh, people automatically want to be like, oh, you have autism, your life must suck and be absolutely terrible. Well, there's neurotypical people whose lives suck and are absolutely terrible. There's neurotypical people who suffer with anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, and other things. And we've got to stop acting like when an artistic person has a meltdown, because it's called a meltdown, we act like that's just such a far cry from having a nervous breakdown or... or, or or I'm talking about it's not the same, but as far as neurotypical people also do have issues. And I'm not quite sure where has broken down in the fact that people want to make like the artistic meltdown is just unacceptable and so much worse than someone who, you know, occasionally deals with being overwhelmed. We got to start making all those comparisons and going back and forth. I just, I don't understand. I don't get it. So that being said. I've been all kind of around the mulberry bush today because I just wanted to bring you all up here with me and kind of chat for a second. I get back to every message that I get and no, I'm not charging. A lot of people are like, do you charge to help people? No, I'm not a licensed practitioner. I'm just a woman who's been autistic for my entire 47 years of life and I have seven autistic children. So over the years, we have found what we call autistic hacks and ways to help. We have children who were completely nonverbal, who would be called very moderate and very not high functioning, very dramatic. And then we have some other children who were more quote high functioning or needed less support. That's really all that it's about. But everyone is able to independently function with help just like any other person in a family that ends up getting help and assistance. I want to encourage all you parents out there who feel like autism is a death sentence. It's not. I get really upset when parents first hear their child has autism and they equate it to things like death or they talk about how horrible it is and how you can be scared of the unknown there's nothing wrong with that but for many of us autistic adults it's so offensive the language that some people use when they find out their child is autistic that it's just just t terrible and you kind of want to always speak up and say if you treat your child the way that you perceive autism, that's how they're going to identify with their self-esteem. So if all you sit up and talk about is I, how you cried when you found out the diagnosis and you talk about how hard it is, how stressful it is all the time, well, all I'm hearing as your child is how tired of me you are, how stressed out you are. Autism does not mean cognitive impairment. Just because your child is nonverbal doesn't mean cognitive impairment. So sometimes you all are saying things and doing things as neurotypical people or caregivers and the autistic person hears and understands you, even though we might not be able to articulate to you exactly how we feel or verbalize it back to you, it doesn't mean that we're not understanding. There's a lot to be said for energy and feeling and body language. I slaughter body language like it's hard for me sometimes to understand sarcasm and what people mean but I feel you and a lot of people diagnosed with autism are very much so intuitive when it comes to feeling and some people would even say empathic we're very attuned to the energies and things that are around us so you have to be very careful when you want to talk about your child or you want to even get help for your child in front of the doctor. I've had people say horrible things to me in front of their child trying to get support or help because you're saying how you feel, but sometimes you need to do that in a separate room. So that's just some stuff I'm throwing out there. Maybe somebody will watch and get confirmation. Parents, if you have a new diagnosis of your child, what you see from me and other verbal adults, it doesn't mean that we were always verbal. It doesn't mean that every single story looks the same. Statistics are statistics, but your child is your child. So you can never sit up and just pigeonhole your child into a statistic and say, well, they're never going to get any better than this. And it's always going to be a struggle. They'll never be potty trained. Autistic people can be delayed in potty training till eight years old. And then after they have it, they have it. And usually it's easy to potty train them because they're older and they get it. Oh, I need to go in the toilet. And, oh, I need to whatever. Some of you are concerned because your child is five or four 
and three and nonverbal. Well, there's autistic people who are not verbal till 10 years old and then something clicks and then they end up having a way to communicate. But there's nothing wrong with communicating through an iPad and other programs that go on. Communication is communication. Sometimes if you stop listening so much to the bad news and the bad things you hear about autism, you can sit for a moment and evaluate and see what is, what is beautiful about your person with autism. We innately love the planet. Like there's just this thing where we want to protect it. Most every autistic person I've ever met wants to protect the environment, the planet. It thrives in nature because nature communes with us on a very non-aggressive level. People lie, use sarcasm and all sorts of stuff. And then you wonder why we don't want to engage with that because we're feeling everything. So it's not that the person isn't happy because they want to isolate or be by themselves. Oftentimes it's just we like our world of solace. We like our world of beauty. We like coming up here to the mountains and watching sunsets. And we like being us. And a lot of times people equate and say that if an autistic person, we feel so bad, they play alone. We feel so bad because this alone, I never a day in my life was just terribly sad that I did some things alone. I was more sad when people didn't accept me when I did want to interact. And I was more sad and messed up about it when people didn't value my silence, even in their presence. So I just throw a couple of those points out here today. I'm going to go, but I hope that you all, if you know someone who's newly diagnosed, you share some of the videos from the page. I try to put lots of videos about the kids, uh, music therapies that they had. You can message me and ask me any question that you want to. Um, but there are ways to support your person diagnosed with autism where they can grow up and be able to interact and be more independent a lot of times than you are being told.